Hello, my name is Elisa, and if you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. Video, my painting didn't turn quite out how I exactly imagined it to begin with, but um, let's watch and see how it goes. So, starting out here, I am going to work wet on wet. Um, I had laid down some pigment and color in an earlier painting, and I loved the effect and how it was going. So, I had an idea that I was going to actually try to replicate it, and you're working with watercolor and you're working with um, different effects. It's, I, it's, it's really hard to predict um, what's gonna happen, um, especially working wet on wet like this. I mean, if I was doing a portrait or something like that, it's pretty easy to be predicted, but when you're using a lot of water and you're letting it run all over the place, it's super hard. And um, so here I'm just, uh, you know, laying down some watercolors, some blues, and using that, a lot of water and a lot of pigment. And I'm actually picking up and, and tilting the board and adding more color and trying to see where this is going to go. I'm just dipping it more into pigment. Now I'm just flicking it on there, trying to create some texture. So when I tip the the piece up sideways and tilt it in all different directions, the pigment starts to run all over the paper, which is what I wanted. So here I dipped my brush, cleaned off my brush, and I'm taking my brush and um, lifting the pigment up that I had put down. So you can still do that when it's wet. Can't do it after it's dried. So I went into some more pigment. I believe that is quinacri quinacridone rose Van Gogh. I really like that color. And when you put it down on the white paper, it's like really pinky and red has a deep color but when I laid it on the blue even though I had lifted some of the pigment all the pigment didn't get lifted up so it's kind of turning purple there I'm tilting it and shifting it in different ways so I'm gonna just tell you originally I thought I was going to be doing a, a floral sort of landscape kind of whimsical and that's why I started adding the green in we'll see why that that changed <laughs> as I keep going there I am just tilting it and tipping it in different directions the pigment is bleeding into one another uh, here I'm just using a paper towel I'm lifting up some of the pigment so using a paper towel too, you can go in and create texture in your piece, just lifting up a little bit of the pigment. I'm just blending more blue in the top. Lots of water I'm using here. Not only that, I'm using a lot of dirty water. <laughs> it's not even, I didn't even... Uh, clean out my cup. Dabbing some more pigment in.
trying to create this effect. So I am sprinkling salt over the piece. And I'm doing it really lightly and sporadically all over the piece. Um, and the cool thing about this is you just never know what's, what you're gonna get. <laughs> Here I am, I'm back. And I realized I wasn't really gonna be able to create my floral. It didn't uh, quite work out how I thought it would. So I started um, putting circles in. I think I initially thought I was going to try to do some sort of whimsical floral, but then I ended up going in a different direction. I had this lovely sheet of paper that I had painted on. It had all these really cool effects, and I didn't want to waste it, so I just uh, went with my heart and worked intuitively and started adding lines, and it sort of turned into a neurographical piece. I just started adding lines and crisscrossing them and went with it. So now here I am rounding out the corners. So any sharp edges I'm rounding out. And right now I'm just rounding them out. I'm not actually, I'll go back in and fill some of them in. I don't show you the whole process because that part is rather boring. But if you're working on a piece yourself, um, you know, you just kind of round off any hard edges and you, I'm using a Sharpie here, a fine tip Sharpie. Um, any fine tip pen will do. Um, ink pen. You can use artist pit pens, you can use a Sharpie, you can use a ballpoint if you want. I've used them all. And you can make, you can round them off as, as large as you want or as, as small as you want. Right here I'm, I'm doing them. I'm making my marks small and I'm gonna fill them in with a uh, brush. A, I'm sorry, a, a brush, yes, a black ink brush pen. See how I made this a little bigger? And you'll see when I go in and fill that in how it'll look. Not really thinking too much when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm just, Focusing on my breath and letting each step lead the way to the next. Um, I don't have an idea really. I'm going with this. I just knew I wanted to create a piece of art on this beautiful watercolor background. I'll have uh, links to the products in my description. We'll have the name and the link. I'll have my Amazon affiliate link. Any um, small purchase you make, I make a very small commission from it, and it helps me to buy our supplies and continue to produce content for YouTube. circle template again. Sorry about the blurriness. Oh, and then let me apologize right now. I did not do my nails. They look horrible. <laughs> they say artists have terrible hands. They have paint all over their hands. There's paint in their fingernails. There's nails I always when I have a show then I'll, that's when I'll sit down and remove all the old nail polish and, and put new on I'm 
just using that brush pen to fill in the black, um, fill in between the lines. My hand is too close to the camera and, and that's why it, it keeps coming in and out of focus. I apologize for that. You can still basically see what I'm doing. Then I'm just uh, filling in those where I had rounded out the edges. It gives it this feeling of I don't know when I use when I when I use my circle template it almost makes it feel like it's in the neurographical art in conjunction with putting um, circles it makes it feel almost um, what I'm looking for like time and space. <laughs> Working like this uh, is very meditative. When you're meditating, it's you're focusing on one thing. So in in essence, this is like a meditation. Is your all your focus is on your brush and the paper and the pigments. I'll take a step back from time to time, see how it's going, what am I going to do next, but usually the ideas, once I get going, the ideas just come through automatically. I know exactly where I'm going to go. I'm using this, um, this is, this is Van Gogh, um, watercolor pigment. I'm almost out of all these. I had bought a pan, a pan set quite a while ago and now most of the paint is almost out and there are some of my favorite colors are in that set so um I mean I don't use all of them so I think when I go to get new I'm just going to buy tubes of the colors that I really like and I like to mix the colors and the pigment together so I put the blue down so originally there was green there and now I put the cerulean blue and now I'm putting um I believe quinacridone purple I don't even know if I'm saying quinac I think I am quinacridone <laughs> uh the, anyways a purple hue I love it I love I, I I tend to always uh stay with the blues and the purples for some reason So when I'm putting down this color, I'm putting it down. So it, it, it had initially dried and I'm wetting the area that I'm putting the pigment in. I'm pretty much wet, wetting it down with an initial layer. And then I'm going back and getting more pigment to make it deeper and make the color deeper. And um, I'm not coloring in everywhere coloring I'm not painting in everywhere because I want to give the painting some different values and contrast I'll take a step back and look and say okay where am I, what am I going to fill in next that's going to give the painting some contrast some of the texture that that I initially put down to show through because when you use water the salt with the watercolor I'm really into that um, I just love the effect it creates sometimes it looks like snowflakes sometimes it looks like ripples of water you just never know what you're gonna get when you use salt
Also, uh, I just thought I would mention it here. Um, by the way, I do have a Facebook group. Uh, it's a just a little community that I'm trying to build, and uh, you know, you have to answer some questions in order to get into it. Um, I want it to remain a sort of a sacred space for people. Um, I want them to be able to come in and, you know, show their work, the work, what they've been working on without fear of uh, being ridiculed or criticized. Unless, of course, they want, I mean, criticism is good. Constructive criticism is always good, but only if, uh, if one asks for it. everything that's talked about in the group stays in the group um, so because I would just want to keep it a you know a, a loving sort of nurturing environment so if that sounds like something you would be interested in that's your vibe feel free to join uh, I'll link it in the description I would be happy to have you So here, in order to keep the composition flowing throughout the piece, I'm trying to kind of pick and choose where I'm going to drop uh, color and make it uh, a little bit of a darker hue. See now over here, I've already made it darker on the lower left hand corner. So I don't want to bring in too dark of a color above it. I want to, I want to bring in color, but I don't want to bring in a color to, to match, say that color, because then it'll just look this big space there like that looks like it's not supposed to be there. And I also didn't want to hide any of that effect that I got with the salt. Uh, the background just came out so beautifully, I didn't want to cover it up. Well, too much anyway. putting yellow over purple <laughs> that gives it like this golden reddish hue I love I do it in my acrylic work too a lower layer uh, purple and, and gold It's dried up and I'm gonna go in with some mark making I'm just doing a little stippling here I thought that this area was too dark and there wasn't enough contrast so I went in and added some excuse me some dots to just give that area around the sphere a little bit more contrast now I'm just fixing my line work here 
went over a little bit with my watercolors. I mean, not by all means, nothing has to be perfect. Um, but I wanted to fix it up a little bit. Keeping it simple, just adding simple patterns and lines. And I don't care if they're straight. I don't use a ruler or anything like that. You know, I'm just going in and adding different patterns throughout the artwork. Different patterns and different marks to kind of also darken the areas that are already dark to give it even more contrast. These pens I'm using, I'm using uh, Fabric Castile, Castel, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, Artist Pit Pens. You can buy a scent of them with different sizes, and there's one brush pen in there as well. Um, and I use usually the brush pen to fill in any bigger areas. I have two types of brush pens that I use. One is the for smaller areas, I use the the artist pit pen and then I have another Japanese brush pen and I'm gonna have links for everything in, in the description box the only thing with the the Japanese brush that I'm using I love it I like it it has a very nice some you can buy different sizes too they have different sizes but the only thing I don't like about it is that it has it runs out of ink really fast and it's not refillable um, but they're only like three bucks or something like that it's they're not expensive they're not gonna make or break you <laughs> um, those Japanese brush pens hold up pretty well on the watercolor paper just saying so I had a couple of brush pens. This one by Pigma doesn't, it works really, really good. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't hold up on the water paper as well. Um, after you've used it quite a few times, it, the tip of the brush goes a little too limp for my liking. Um, so, and it's a little bit more pricier than the, than the Japanese brush pen. So um, I'd rather use that instead and plus it you know the brush really holds up a lot better going in making some more random marks kind of had this like it kind of looked like fish scales
So a couple of weeks ago, I was doing actually uh, an art show in Melbourne, Florida, and I stayed overnight rather than going back and forth uh, from home, which was about an hour and a half, not too far, but um, I opted to stay overnight one night. And I stayed at this lovely Airbnb and I was hosted by uh, a lovely woman and she's also an artist. Um, and she has this house and because it was just me, she actually ended up staying in the house with me, which was nice because then I wasn't alone <laughs> in this big house. Uh, but anyway, she was really close to the beach. And I decided in the morning, as I always, I get up pretty early, I decided that I was going to walk to the beach. And even though I live in Stewart, Florida, um, not far from the beach, but still I'm, I'm a drive. Like I have to get in the car and go. But here it was nice. All I had to do was kind of roll out of bed, get dressed and walk over there. And I had said the night before I was going to walk over there for sunrise. So in the morning, I got up and I didn't have to even force myself to get up. I just woke up naturally and I got dressed and walked over to the beach and sat there. Uh, first light and I closed my eyes and I just focused on my breath and I'd open my eyes from time to time and just look up into the sky and it was just a beautiful morning and it was somewhat overcast um, but you could see the sun coming in, up through the clouds and all the clouds had this like luminous, like pink, pinkish, silverly, silvery lining around them. And I continued to sit there for a little bit and as I wrapped up my meditation, I, uh, a word just came to me and the word was ubiquitous ubiquitous means present and appearing and found all around and everywhere um, it just really hit me it just really struck a chord with me decided I said to him I decided to include it in my painting thanks for joining me on this little journey uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more my, more of my content if you liked it uh, please leave any questions uh, about the products that I used or if you'd like to share anything with me and the community please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and again like I said earlier I do have a private Facebook group that you can be a part of it's a space where we foster a caring community of creatives who are all about supporting and lifting each other up that's what we're all about. Um, it's about healing the world through art. And uh, take care and I will catch you in the next one.